Hey everyone, my name is Kabi and today I'm going to show you the game of the two players who's already floated quite high in rating after the wipe we've had recently. So we'll have in the bottom right corner the red player. It is actually the guy who was previously known as Ale, Aleandre. He also owns and runs a YouTube channel. But he commentates in Russian, so I'm not sure if you guys watch him, but anyway, I'm gonna call him that, because his player, uh, his opponent is the guy who's called player B2. I'm not sure who it is, because I just don't know somewhat a real nickname, if he ever had one, but uh, many players refer to him just as player B2, because there ain't uh, too many players above 3k, so these two are, I believe, pretty much in the captain league, and they are sitting somewhere around 3.4k rating currently, so that's quite a lot. I'm not sure how high are you guys now, by the way, you may share this in the comments, but I personally only sit in like maybe 350 with my dark faction just hit my record one league and my light faction is in the novice 3 I believe or even novice 2 somewhere below 300 and these guys are above 3000 and 300 so that's quite a bit and uh, what I mean is there isn't too many players in there so they pretty much meet each other over and over again and player B2 is one of the players the guys meet quite too often so L reported this game to me in order like hey guys look what happened here so I don't even know yet but I just thought that if I'm gonna watch it then why why am I not recording a video for the guys who is probably eager to watch something on YouTube because we had a wipe recently and I didn't make too many content yet, so probably we can just watch this one together. So let's see what's happening and we can see the player B2 go in the Elven Tree and the Altar of Heroes and also the second Rex and even the Shipyard. So he's gonna farm his chest captured. with pretty much one ship, I believe. This is such a weird map to play, to play the C, honestly, but you can actually block the second base, more or less, with the ship, but usually even if the guy, if the guys go water, they cut it at one ship just to loot the chest. That also means that you will be seven foot shorter, so you may really consider the risks, because there, there isn't a naval farm, right? So you can't get food for having the sea, controlling the sea. But anyway, what is also interesting is that player B2 completely skips any swordsman. So he only scouts with the Firefly and then he skips all the units until the first archer and then he keeps pulling his worker away so the goon can't really do me can't really do much and what's for isle uh, he's not really a micro intensive player and uh, you don't think too much of his skill he's a very humble guy so he just thinks like all right i'm not gonna harass the workers because probably I'm gonna harass myself even harder if I mess up with Resources my build order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick to my plan and he doesn't have the swordsman. All right. That's not too important. But he has the two goons, uh, probably the unnecessary, but honestly not really because he also plays the two workshops aeronauts as we saw in the base of the dark player so he goes mass aeronauts and isn't it the bad news actually because he clearly 
so the quick archers did, but interestingly enough, L keeps playing the same Resources stuff. Collected. By the way, the, the blue ship captured the two chests, just as per normally. And here we can see the princess does her princess stuff. I'm actually surprised with both her not finishing the workers and the goon not blocking the princess in. So it looked like she was supposed to be blocked, but probably the goon was misplaced. But anyway, L cut his goon production at 3, and then he keeps going with just aeronauts and the alchemist and a bit of goons. I really like this style for some reason. I love the goblin openers, I don't know why. Just feel like it feels right, I, I can't explain, but it feels right. But it doesn't work right, currently. Unfortunately, because we can see how... Well, actually, not too many aeronauts even go down, because the alchemist does the really bad stuff to the archers with his poison damage. Alright, what's about the production? We can see L pro uh, producing even more aeronauts. And in the meantime, the light player keeps producing the archers, leveling up his altar of heroes and adding factory. That's a bit uh, unexpected. Oh, the second shipyard. Or should I say the, se the first one, because this one was destroyed. So he actually went the second sloop but the problem is that l actually built a shipyard too it seems that uh, the light player didn't know that so he thought he would be taking the second naval chests for free but we'll see how will it turn out currently the sloop just uh, chilling in the meantime l adds the mana tower and leveling up all the stuff and as per currently it seems like he's gonna go the catapults well i'll be honest with you guys i knew that l is testing mass catapults right now and that the aeronauts is the best opener for it but i didn't watch the game so this style is still a bit new for me so i'm not familiar with the switch but what was also unexpected was how early player B2 went uh, the second tier of the altar and only now he is being adding the human monument. So it seems like he's really good at, at some points of the game. He misses a bit with the others. But overall it seems to be quite an accomplished player. I'm not sure who, is, who that is. Probably he's gonna change the name later. The or maybe he's gonna uh, keep going with the mystery. Somewhat of a max box level mystery. Probably not really a max box level. But I hope we grow this big to call some player a max box level mystery. For those who doesn't know, there is a Danish StarCraft 2 player, one of the best in Europe, but he never goes to any land, so he actually skips all the finals. The point is he qualifies too, so he just denies getting the prize money, because for some reason he can't go to the lands. So there are many versions of what's really happening to him. Probably the real version is the most boring one, but it seems like we are never gonna know. Never gonna find out. Forces are under attack. All right. So, the first catapult approach, L tries to take the center of the map because in the 15th mini mark, as you guys, I believe, must be aware of, is coming the summoning stone. 
that will allow the players to get the elemental. And in the meantime, yeah, there were two sloops. So Al lost the battle on the sea. And I don't think he ever he's ever going to fight for that anymore. So what he needs is just one catapult to take down any amount of sloops. And an interesting stuff happening. The light player decided to actually fight in the middle of the map, while L decided to go the base straight. Uh, Alright, he has the two catapults here. So when he has the two catapults, that means that the damage he can deal to the buildings becomes insane. But the light player uses the fortification. Also engages on the catapults from behind, so the catapults go down. One very steadily and the second a bit slower, but eventually they both died. Or, should we rather say, it has been destroyed. And so far, L didn't even kill so many buildings. Too many buildings. But probably he can still take down this one. So I wonder now how important it is that there are three sloops. Because this sloop doesn't even take part in the fight. And, I, and, and she can't. The sloop is a boat, so we can refer it as a she, right? As any boat in the world. So probably she can't. Because it is way too far. The other two sloops try to do the things. But obviously the catapult is gonna take it down eventually. A couple of workers go down. And in the end, with all the reinforcement, I believe that player Bidva is gonna pull this back. And force Al to retreat. To at least fight uh, aside uh, from the ratio building hour. All right, so the shooter's mark lays down on the Chieftain Grok, so Chieftain goes down. Catapult can't really be too helpful here, but there is the other one. And still th two plus minutes to play before the elemental will arrive. Meteorite goes down. L wasn't quick enough to dodge that. But even more catapults arrive, no more aeronauts is being built whatsoever. Alright, actually there is an aeronauts. I shouldn't have been that bold with that uh, warding. Probably I would recommend L to take down a helicopter with the aeronauts, but he genuinely prefers to actually kill the archers. And then he goes for the healers to be able later to kill a princess, I believe. But then he turn around and take down the helicopter. And uh, then just starts shooting the princess. But the three healers make too many impacts on this engagement. But once the napalm tower starts hitting, then the healers are not that good at healing anymore. And then the dark player has one more minute to hold this position. In the meantime, the second sloop still in business. So probably L wasn't quick enough to figure out everything. I'm not sure. He could have been also pulling this the other catapult uh, for uh, in purpose on purpose to be able to win the fight in the center of the map, because that is what's really crucial. And the sloop here, well, we can call it annoying, I guess, but... I believe we can agree that it's not the game-changing unit right now. Wasn't it supposed to be one? I can, I can kill because... I mean... There is the expensive unit next to your mining line. And it is 
just soloing your workers. How come it doesn't even do any input? Probably we should reconsider the situations like this, I'm not sure, but anyways, we can see how Al casually takes that summoning stone and so the elemental who's already routed to the enemy's base heading to the second building he can find and that will be the human monument now the princess goes down to the Verg rider and it seems that uh, the bombardier can't be way too helpful either now the sloop can be a little bit helpful but actually Alejandro has I'd say what what he needs to finish this off because the elemental is very tanky the two heroes are here the catapults arrived bombardier destroys them though there is a great impact on the on this part and this battle probably the best the, the bombardier could have ever done but uh, still the light player doesn't have many other tools to try to pull this back now he decided to go the really strong units it seems so it's been like all right that was funny i played elves i tried the archers probably didn't work let's see what happens if i go the real units those will be war smith and the bikers but isn't it a little bit too late mr player b2 i bet it is so the game is pretty much done and i'm not sure if we can say that not every light unit is equally useful but at least we can consider the archer strength from this game because i didn't see that uh, they dealt they dealt uh, too greatly with the aeronauts which they supposed to be able to do and now i'm just finishing off the base and player b2 doesn't have anything left but to type out and unfortunately the sloops wasn't useful obviously they are not too great on this map but i would still love to see them be able to do more against the mining line but it was quite an interesting game a new opening to me so let's now guys be ready to the dark players playing uh, through the two workshops aeronauts and the catapults and what do we counter it with i don't know yet probably you guys can suggest something in the comments and for this time i'm gonna wrap it up so i'll see what you write in the comments and i also see you next time make sure to sub to our channel so that you don't miss the next video and i'll see you there my name is kabi bye bye